Thank you, Father Bauer, Father Becker, Reverend Fathers, members of Team Vienni, any other honored guests, and my brothers. A few years ago, my parish, St. Raphael in Crystal, Minnesota, was having a rough transitional period. Our longtime pastor was reassigned after his 12-year term had ended, and our next pastor died in office after only two years, and our associate pastor was rapidly approaching retirement age and could only help out for so long. We were anxiously awaiting a new pastor who could give us a sense of stability. At the youth group New Year's party, December 31st, 2011, we heard through the grapevine that a priest in Maple Lake had just announced that his Saturday vigil mass, he was being reassigned to our parish. One of the adult leaders lit up with joy, saying that this priest had said her father's funeral and was a priest full of joy and love. Immediately, we were excited and had high hopes for Father Michael Eisen, a priest of six years. When Father Eisen moved in in February of 2012, everyone knew there was something special about this 45-year-old priest. He was constantly in the parish school and in just a few short months knew all of the children's names. He was active in the youth ministry, many days stopping by during open youth room to play pool. He would always play sports with the school or the youth group kids, being pretty good at dodgeball and amazing at basketball. Father Eisen was a shepherd who was with the sheep. In all he did, there was a joy and love that all the parishioners, both young and old, felt. Furthermore, Father Eisen was not afraid to stand up for the truth. I recall distinctly in 2012, during the fiery politics surrounding the Minnesota Marriage Amendment, Father Eisen had the courage to devote an entire homily to the topic of the necessity of voting for the amendment and defining marriage as one man and one woman. Father Eisen asserted that, quote, tolerance of a virtue is not tolerance uh, tolerance is not a virtue if it is tolerating sin. After Father Eisen finished that homily, on a topic which few priests would dare broach due to the fear of driving people away or being deemed a bigot, I was applauding loudly along with everyone else in the pews. One of my friends commented that Father Eisen is a priest who is easy to respect because he respects you. I felt this respect personally every time I returned to my parish over an open weekend or a break and he would proudly point me out amongst the other altar servers. He would often ask for my opinion on how I would think the best way to do something at Mass or in a procession would be, valuing my opinion and affirming me. Most importantly, Father Eisen was a man of deep prayer and devotion to the Eucharist. His Masses were always celebrated reverently and with great devotion. It was at a Mass he celebrated that I clearly heard the voice of God calling me to the priesthood over Christmas break in 2012. His homilies were not only courageous, but humorous, memorable, and spiritual. Father Eisen is not only my priest hero, but that of many others as well. When Father announced this past May that Archbishop had called him to serve at another parish, tears flowed freely from many parishioners' eyes. When preparing for this talk, I asked a few other young men from the parish why he was such an amazing pastor to them. Comments included that he was a man who was generous, a man who made you feel valued, and a man who was a friend. There are several high schoolers at my parish now discerning calls to the priesthood that can surely be said to have been sparked by Father Eisen. His influence in my parish and in the lives of those there is immeasurable. I am proud to know Father Eisen, a truly good shepherd, and to call him my priest hero. Praise be Jesus Christ. Amen.